We just make this stuff up live. It's live streaming professionals. Everybody, sorry for the craziness. As you know, I am not walking from home turf today. <laughs> Mark said, this stream is like me wearing somebody else's pants. But you know what? We still wanted to be able to come in and kick out the information. I'm sitting at an elementary school desk because I'm bigger than Katie. I feel like I'm in elementary school. This is cool. But yes, I'm here at ECAM headquarters, which is dope. Like, it's, it's been a long flight. I've been in the air for over 12 hours. And I said, you know, the best way to kick off getting to Massachusetts, talk to somebody from the original Massachusetts, a.k.a. the UK. How you doing, Mark? <laughs> I'm good, thanks, man. Glad you had a safe journey. And you're, uh, you look good at the school desk. You know, um, it's, a good, uh, it's, it's a good modern look for you, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for someone to tell me I got, like, detention or clean erasers or something like that. It's pretty Yeah, intense. you gotta, you got to watch that, dude. You've got to be doing lines on the blackboard, you know? you got to watch that. You gotta, you're going to get chalk on the fingers and everything. That's a nightmare. <laughs> what well, this town is super dope. I swear it was, like, old Ipswich town. It's got all the bricks everywhere. Like, I'm really, really enjoying it. So it's kind of nice. cool. What we want to do today, gang, is we wanted to talk to you about podcasting and so it's not a theme i swear to you this is purely accidental this is not a theme but again self-serving because i'm launching a new podcast on sunday and i'm setting it up on mark's service which is captivate.fm and i gotta tell you gang i was like oh there's gonna be a lot of work it's so simple. It's crazy simple. And I did it live in my Facebook group. Everybody was watching me they're like, you done? And I'm like, yeah, I'm done. And they're like, no, you're not. I'm like, uh-huh, that's it. It's like, it's super cool. So we wanted to give a chance to do some Q&A, ask her questions about podcasting for you folks. A lot of Ecamm users are using Ecamm to do podcasts. So we thought like, you know, Instead of just getting a podcaster, let's get a podcaster who's also a CEO and co-founder of several different podcasting businesses, and let's masterclass that. So if you have any questions, you guys know the format, drop them in you know, the Q colon format so that we can find them. But uh, while, while I go farm some comments from you guys, let's have Mark give a quick introduction and talk a little bit about Rebel Base Media of course, Rebel Base, come on. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> and Captivate. So um, what, what made you start this? Come on, this is a good question. We uh, we just couldn't find a hosting platform that, that we liked. And I, I, mean, I mean that with the utmost respect to all of the other ones. You know, I've used most of them or some of them in the past, some of the older ones. And... Um, you know, I've been in podcasting for a long time, either through education or public speaking, or obviously creating my own podcast since well, nearly ten years now. Um, and and you know, I was sort of pretty embedded in the industry, and, and I'm pretty outspoken. You know, I'm, my background is a digital agency owner. I've built businesses for, since I was like 23, and um, just sort of became. I wouldn't say frustrated, but I just thought, you know, I can, we can do better than this based on a lot of the stuff that I'd like for myself. Um, so we, we just created Captivate, you know, we, we, we built Captivate out and Rebel Base Media is, is Kieran and I, you know, he's my co-founder. We build all sorts of different products out and um, Captivate is the main one that we're on now and, 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 and will be for, for the foreseeable future. But it's, um, it was just a way of sort of scratching our own itch a little bit. And then it, it, it sort of, it's become this vision. We've always had this vision since we got into podcasting about you know, host really just being one piece of the puzzle. Um, you know, we want to do much more around data insights and workflow and planning and connecting the dots between what's working, what's not working, you know, my activity um, as a marketer, as a promoter, as a content creator, like how does that translate to success or a lack of success and why? Um, so it sort of began as this, we can do better thing and then finished or not finished, but has got to the point now where it's, you know, it, we target the serious podcaster, like we help the serious podcaster, the, the person that wants to do something with their content, you know, we help them to achieve their potential. And that's, that's what Captivate does through tools and education and, and just through anything that, that you, that you would associate with just a good company trying to help you. Um, and it's, it's funny cause it, it, it's, um, like, it seems obvious that, you know, it seems mm. obvious. And I think a lot of people say that they do that and they want to do that. 
But then when you look at like the product that they've released and the upgrades that they do, and there's not really much proof that they want to do that. It's just sort of a nice marketing tagline for the front of the website. Um, so we just we just live and breathe what we do, and and, and you, know, you can see that from our change log, from our blog, from our updates, from our trust pilot, and you know everything that comes comes from all that stuff. It's, definitely, definitely do a you, lot of updates, which is cool. I like that. Yeah, we do. We we do a lot of updates, right? We're forever updating. So when you see that someone's active, it's it's funny. When I worked at Apple, when I went anywhere, I always based my my. You know, I call it the Yelp review. I never did Yelp reviews, but my, my review for a place was based off of their customer service. Mm -hmm. And I worked at Apple and, you know, Rich Carlton is not that far from my, my house. So I'm like, everybody's customer service got to be at that level or you don't count. Now mm -hmm. <laughs> working at Ecamm, like when I see innovation and constantly moving and updating and making it better and better and better, listening to people, like listening to the users and just being very user focused. That's my gauge for apps now. And so, yeah, I like the fact that you guys are always moving just like we are. Yeah, it's a fun one. I think it's, I think it's about being user focused, but I'd, I'd posit that it's even sort of gone beyond that. You know, I think mm. it's now about being, um, and this is a bad term for it because I think it's too generic and I think everyone says it, but I think it's more about being, customer success focused. Now I'm saying that and I hate it because I, I think there's a better phrase for it somewhere, but I don't know what that phrase is. Like what I'm not talking about here is on your tagline, like customer success champion on LinkedIn. Like that's a, that's a, you know, that's a getting the ski job. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking more about like, um, honesty in success. Oh. Now, let, 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 yeah, it's a funny one. I'll give you some examples of this. Cause I'm a bit of a, like I'm a bit of a, an outspoken old grumpy stalwart for this. Because Welcome I think to my club, that's where we get along. <laughs> I know, right? You get to thirty something, both in our thirties, both in our thirties, and you're like, "Yeah, I think I've got. I think I'm a bit grumpy now." Um, <laughs> so, the um, the example that I give, like, is that it was all about the customer being right, and it was all about the customer being happy for such a long time. And I think that happiness doesn't come from correctness and from being right. I think it comes from achieving the thing that you want to achieve. It's like, you know, you think of the greatest whatever you want, whether it's the greatest, I don't know, you can see it on the video, there's a bass guitar behind me, you know, whether it's been the greatest bass player, whether, you know, whether that's Jacko or like an old, a new bass player like Henrik Linder or someone like Aidan Nielsen, a, a fantastic, uh, the Prince's bassist, you know, I don't think that their music teachers were easy on them, but they turned them into the successors that they are, or they certainly contribute. And it's like, you know, uh, Butch Harmon or Tiger Woods' dad, um, you know, Earl Woods. They weren't easy on Tiger, but he's Tiger Woods. He's Tiger freaking Woods. You know, he can do things that no one else can do. Um, and I think when you when you sort of do two things, when you understand, number one, that you're, you're working with creators, and number two, you're providing software to creators, I think you sometimes have to have their success in mind, even if the things that you tell them are really difficult. Now, the the what that means for you as a, as a as a product creator is that you have to have resilience and persistence because i get so many of our users that are a little bit annoyed by me because <laughs> like i really do like there's there's someone at the minute who's he's like his downloads have dropped and i'm like well it's it's there's nothing wrong with the podcasting system or with apple or spotify there's nothing wrong with that it's just you know your content's not great dude so from my perspective, like, what can you do? So what you could do is, you, you know, if you if you are user focused, what you can do is you can say, I'm like, this would be the script, wouldn't it, from from someone else? It would be like, I'm really sorry for you, frustrated, and I completely understand that. Let me give you a month's free credit, and what I'm going to do is advise our technical team to keep on top of this and keep an eye on it. Right? That sounds like a really good response. But you're not it? helping. But you're not help you're coddling. That's it. Well, and then there's the next level of response, which is the perception of help. But actually, this is coddling and moving it on. So sticking it like taking it off my list and putting it on someone else's list. And that that goes much like this. Same response as before. I'm really sorry for your frustration. I pass it to our tech team. But also, here's these wonderful help articles that we created and this education that we gave you. Um, go and look at that. You know, Which is what that does is it, it, it piles the work on the person. 
So what that does is it takes someone that's already stressed and a little bit, you know, a little bit cheesed off, and your software will get the blame for this, regardless of if it's not oh, the, the problem. Me, you know, know you know what it's like. It's, <laughs> it's inevitable, right? So that's the next level, and that's what people think is good, because they, like they think that well, we've created all this awesome stuff now. The next level, which is really tough and really you've got to be really resilient with, is um, I understand, but. Okay, so it, it's this. I understand that your downloads have dropped, but I've taken a look at your content and I've spotted a couple of issues with your specific titles. Here are three specific things I think you should do today to change this. So what you're doing is you, you, you're teaching the man to fish. You're not giving him the fish. And I think you sort of extrapolate that out a little more. But the problem with that is that you've then got to get past being the villain. There's a, a um, I've written this in a blog post, right? There's a Batman quote, um, Dark Knight, isn't it, with Harvey Dent? Um, mm. What's his name? Aaron Eckhart, whatever his name, plays Harvey Dent. And he says, you're either die a hero or you live long enough to become the villain. And at some point, software in your life becomes the villain. And it's the hero for such a long time until it becomes the villain. That one day that something else doesn't work, or even your software doesn't help, you know, maybe something does go wrong and you've got to own that. But the fact of the matter is, when you will always end up being that villain and it's your job to turn that angry customer through help and education into being what they are, which is a creator that cares about their own success. So what can you do? Well, there's a few things that, that, that we do with this one. And this is, I know this is getting into the realm of like how to build a software platform, but the, you know, my, I said to the, the, the to Sam, who's our head of experience today, I said, just give this person um, my calendar link and tell them, I'll give them 30 minutes free podcast coaching and I will just do that. I will do this like I'm doing this. And is that scalable? Of course it's not. Should you do it as CEO? Like, prob like that's probably not in any of the books. You know, and it's <laughs> what that does is it turns you into not the villain, but the really caring dad or mum that's like, you are Tiger freaking Woods. You're better than this, but you don't know how to do this thing yet. Or here's some things that you've not seen because you're so close to it. Let me not only solve these with you now, but give you something that you can take forward. And then, by the way, Here's a live mastermind that we do every month. Come along there. Let's get to know each other. Um, I'm just a person like you. I'm not a chat bot. I'm not a support bot. I'm not an email. You know, I'm a human and I go to bed like you and I get up like you. And so we should solve this together. That's now, rare. it's difficult as well. Like it's, 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 it's sort of weird because you get this um, pushback. You, know, you get this pushback from people, which is, well, I've been doing this for a long time and I'm, I'm a former X, Y, Z and I know all about podcasting because I've released a thousand episodes. Oh, that's really cool. So what, like, why are you having this problem then? You know, and, then you, and you have to be that frank with them. Like I said some, to someone today, maybe you're not the right customer. And he was like, why is that? And I told him and he was like, yeah, I'm being a little bit obnoxious, aren't I? And I was like, you're not being obnoxious, mate. You just, you, the thing that you believe to be important, actually in the grand scheme of things, is not the thing that you want to achieve. Actually, all you're doing is the, this is a thing that you think you can control. So that's the thing you're focusing on. My job is to move that barrier out of the way and take you to where you want to be. Um, now, what that what that transposes to, and I know this is, again, this is not like, um, let's talk podcasting, but I think it's important to understand this because that becomes a culture and you know for me if i was to have a, like i've got a week off next week i'm going to the seaside i'm gonna go eat some ice cream and uh, put more lockdown weight on it's gonna be fantastic i can't wait um like diabetes here we come and i'm gonna <laughs> i'm not gonna be around so if that happens again by leading the team in that way the team are empowered to say look my job is to do this and take you to success not to just say you are right because you don't want me to say that what you want yeah, me to do is not helping help yeah. you with the success no exactly exactly so like i said i know that's a little bit of a digression um no but it's actually good it, that's good to know because number one it lets people understand um well think about it 
we we have a similar situation in the YouTube community where people think the algorithm is messing with them. And I'm like, no, the algorithm's job is to make people watch longer. If they're not watching, it's, the algorithm's not going to do anything to take money out of their own pockets, right? So I think the other thing that might happen to is guys who's been podcasting forever. Like, you know, I started way back when it wasn't even called podcasting yet, when and, and Apple, you know, stole the name and made it theirs. But... Mm -hmm. Just from the, I call it the situation, forward, I mean, we went from like 750, 800,000 podcasts to almost 2 million now. So people got more choices. If your listening is going down, it's because you got more like, you know, single people running around available. Mm. So you have to do things to make yourself more of a commodity. I'm sorry, not a commodity. You have to make yourself less of a commodity and be more of, you know, that unique selling point. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. They think that, oh, well, because podcasting is booming, I'm just going to start this new podcast or I'm going to keep yeah. doing what I've been doing and you're not going anywhere. Um, similar to that, that is so true, man. Similar to that show, what was it called? Late Night with um, Emma Thompson where she was the late night TV host and you know, they're like, Oh, you're out of date. She's not on social media. Like it didn't make any sense. And the network was going to fire her because she had just kept doing the same show. She's always been doing like, you know, thinking that's going to work. Mm -hmm. Not nah, things change. It, it definitely changes. So speaking of which as a segue, what do you think has been this driving factor and what should podcast people do to stay relevant in this new like exploding podcasting climate because it's craziness exploding this yeah it, it is it's a, it's a fun one that dude because you've got um you know you've sort of you've seen podcasting grow up in such a short space of time you know and it's still not grown up really i mean it's still not it's still it's not still the industry the infancy, that will yeah yeah yeah, and I think when you consider, like, it's the rise of on-demand that's done it, that, you know, podcasting has always been on-demand, but no one knew that on-demand existed before Uber, and then before Netflix, and then before, like, I can order a Domino's on my phone four times a week, which I'm cutting down on, I promise. <laughs> but, you know, that's allegedly, it's not always four times, sometimes it's six. Um, and it's, so, like, what that's done is, that that's educated my mum, that, like, whatever my mum's into, which is, I don't know if there are shows about gossip, but let's assume that there are shows about gossip, which is what my mum's into. Like she now can f understand that the audio, you know, I used I, I used to be able to get Netflix in my house, and then I got in the car or I went for a walk to my grandmother's, and I had to listen to it was sort of what was sort of on the radio or on my Spotify, uh, which was still just like you know all the CDs in the world. It wasn't like it is now, and. And, and so that that experience of listening was dictated by what was available. Whereas now, th there's this, been this perfect storm over the last ten years, which is people understand they can get anything they want on demand, and then audio already sort of had a back catalogue of on demand things that now someone like my mum knows she can access. So that's why it's boomed. And then what that's resulted in, like you alluded to it earlier, mate, which I think was brilliant, is. Like in 2012, 2011, you could create a pretty straightforward templated podcast um, and probably do all right because there were so few options for people to choose from. And so what then happened is that people started teaching how to do that. And then you got this next generation of people creating the same kind of show, but then they were creating lots of supply and the demand wasn't there. So now the demand is there, you know, whatever, one in two people or one in three people have listened to a podcast, whatever it is in the US, I can't remember the data, but the demand's there and the supply is now just average mm. because so many people have got so many different needs and requirements and likes and dislikes. I don't want to listen to your entrepreneur um interview show like if i wanted that i'll go listen to john at eo fire because he's pretty damn good at it and he's been doing it a hell of a long time you know so what are you gonna do that stands out like what is your thing now the only real way to to stand out and and, and this is not a tactic where well, it is a tactical thing but there are other marketing tactics that you can use but the overarching factor that you have to consider is that you are not going to succeed unless you are good so what does that mean 
Like that's yeah. the ultimate marketing tactic. Is yeah, because it good. didn't used to be, be that be way. Good. And before you just no. had to be there, but you can't do that now. Now you got to be good. And you know what is what it is? Produced shows. There was produced shows long before Serial. The public mm. seems to think Serial did it. This American Life has been a produced show since I don't know, like day one. Like this American Life been produced for a hot minute. Even Adam Carolla, one of the you know famously one of the earliest podcasts, his stuff was pretty well produced from back then. But now, like even the small guys are out here producing like nobody's business. So <clears throat> I think that that helps. Um, I think bringing the live element, which is something I'm probably mm. going to do um, because I'm already a live streamer, see? So I'm going to work them both in, into a situation like that. Um, but I have experience doing live podcasts, so I think, you know, I think it should be simpler. But, yeah, you just cannot just crack the mic and go. You really have to have a plan and figure out your unique selling point, figure out what your – customer avatar looks like or your listener avatar right i think that's super important as well so mm. yeah that's, that's and i think going where going where the depth is as well like you, i think you can get one or two facets of your podcast slightly wrong like as an example you know um me and my fiance sam you know we're expecting our first kid which is absolutely terrifying which is why i need to cut the dominoes down and it's like so i've got six months to figure out parenting right so <laughs> There's two things that happen with that. Three things. The first one is that ain't going to happen. I'm going to be terrible at it. But number two <laughs> and number three will be I am going to choose what content to consume. And Ooh. Sam and I have already said, like, you know, I'm like you, you know, you're a streamer and I'm, I'm, I'm a podcaster. And I'm like, well, we, well, actually, Sam said it, which I think is like a testament to my indoctrination. She's like, you should, we should do a podcast on it. All right. So we... There are two things that are going to happen. I'm going to seek out content that is useful to me and consume it in ways that I like, which is like driving to the studio. I've got a one hour commute either way to my own business, which when I say it out loud, sounds stupid. Why did I do that? But it's, it's my time to listen to podcasts. So I'm going to then listen. I'm going to listen for either good content or good quality audio that I think is good content until I realize it's it's not, all right? So that like they're the two triggers. When we come to create our podcast, like Sam and I probably aren't going to go through the process of like designing segments out and doing like a badass trailer because it's just her and I shooting the breeze. But in that case, we can do that bit on the fly, but what we can't do, like our audio can't be like this. Oh. We can't, you know? <laughs> So it, it it has to be like this. Yes. You know, so you can't get away with everything being wrong. Yes. And it's funny because I am, well, part of my talk, you know, here for this leap in the live stream this week, part of my talk is about gear and, you know, buy it right, buy it, buy it right or buy it twice. It's hard, you know, hard to say. Um, and the reason why is there's a lot of people that want to tell people like, yeah, you can just use any old gear, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, you can't. This is a competitive space now. And you can start there, but you got to give yourself a deadline where to get out of it. Right. And what a yeah. lot of people will do is they'll get in and they're like, I use this old camera and this old mic and, you know, just do some graphics together that I downloaded from somewhere. And then a year later, you're still there because you didn't give yourself a chance to get out. And now you're growing and then you hit a brick wall and now you're shrinking. And that's because, you know, you went to the gym every day and lift 25, you know, three mm. sets of 10. That doesn't get you stronger. That leaves you exactly mm. where you were. Like you have to eventually add some more weight onto that thing. Otherwise you're just at the gym, you know, walking around and taking up oxygen. So yeah, I, I think I, I completely agree with what you say there. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't put into their thought process when they're doing podcasts, because it's different from video video. You can distract people. Right, you yeah. can do. You can keep them like that, you, can't you? That's right. You, you can twirl this. You can add some overlays. You know, you can bring in a cool guest from England, <laughs> right? But in <laughs> podcasts, you only got your voice. The best you can yeah. do is use that. And some people will get on the microphone and just do this thing where they're talking in a completely monotone situation. Like you don't talk like that. Oh yeah. Like you gotta get excited. Like you know, put some put some oomph into that show you know <laughs> well there's 
there's two there's, there's two things that, that I always say with that one, which are um, to that end, like there's the the, the, the distraction element. So I, I'm a big fan of like creating segments for the podcast. Um, and, and I've just had some stings done for a new show that I'm doing, which to are like break, custom. To break it custom. up? Is that to break it yeah, up? Yeah. So so, okay. They're pretty much custom audio stuff. And I've got some very catchy names for, for them. And, and so what that does is it, it keeps people coming back for those segments. Like they might not like the entire show, but they might like, like with the Star Wars show, they might like the review and discussion or the, you know, whatever. Like I've, I've got a, Oh, one of my man. shows is a podcasting show, which is um, I've got a segment in the podcasting. In fact, there's two and I. Uh, in fact, uh, there's three. It's not kid friendly. So we've got um, <laughs> a news segment, which is like a little chat segment, which is called podcasting mass debate, where we debate something on mass about the podcasting industry. Now, of course, that sounds a little rude, but obviously I'll play dumb all my life. But the point is that it's got an edge to it. And we can be a bit cheeky with how we deliver the content. And then we've got two others, which are designed for very specific reasons, for shareability and for, um, like, just getting eyes on because that's what you want. <clears throat> so those two segments are, which I think are fascinating. They've, they've got their own stings. They've got a, you know, a, a very old school one division style jingle, you know, family ties style 90s sort of jingle going on. Um, and those two segments are stupid sh- in podcasting, uh, the kid-friendly version, stupid stuff in podcasting, because <laughs> if something happens, you know, and everyone's skirting around it being, okay, we think this is crazy. But if we go at it and just go, yeah, this is absolutely stupid, it gets eyes on because no one else is doing it. That's right. The, the, That's the third right. segment, which is <clears throat> the other one, is called the flattering ram. So we just, every single episode, we pick some random person in the podcast industry and out of nowhere, just hit them with a compliment. So it might be like, do you know what? On the, all right, who's the flattering ram this week? Right, it's Doc. All right, why are we flattering him? Because his beard is just absolutely fantastic. And what that results in is that person hearing about it on social. But they hear about someone talking about their beard on a podcast about podcasting. They're like, it's this big mix of things that they never, ever oh. expect. You know? They're, so it's they're going weird- to go dive in and try to find that piece. They just become, mm. and then, they, of course, they're going to go share it with everybody. They know, hey, guys, check this out. You know, I got, I got called out on mm. the show. You got to come and see it. That is genius. That is genius, like bringing bread to the goldfish pond kind of thing you know that is yeah. super super it, genius well the cool thing about it as well is is that we'll play um, this is not the right music but i'll play some music on it you know imagine this warning incoming music and this week's flattering ram is doc he's got a badass beard and i'm so pleased that i get to see it every day when i do a live stream with him until next week <laughs> who's it gonna be recommend one at mark.live slash flattering ram i'll see you next week you know you kind of do that sort of stuff and guys, the, 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 guys, did you see that? On the fly, you're able to do that. <laughs> this is why I keep getting in your guys' case about your practice, man. When you practice, you can just do stuff like that. But when you're just like, I need everything to be in this format and write it this way, and this, you're going to run into a situation where you got to just run with the flow and you're not going to be able to. You have to practice this stuff. And I think that's, that's a good example of how dope you can just pull one out of the sky. So, yes, yeah, that is Mark. practice. It's no, no, it's all good. I'll talk to you about that in a second because you can turn a lack of practice into a positive as well. I'll get to that because that's an interesting point. Um, but what's cool about these segments is this that you know, the, 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 the range of people watching this now or listening to my podcast, they'll be like, ah, I dropped out after five minutes, but I liked the first five minutes. Or, and it's because I'm, I, I only said the thing that they liked in that five minutes. They got what they needed and left. Or someone told them that 40 minutes in, we said something badass. Now, what's really cool about this is that by segmenting this stuff up, people can just come back for the flattering ramp. They don't have to listen mm. to the entire, entire thing. But guess what? They might it's not like YouTube. This, no, it, exactly. It's a real. It's a download, or that's a listen. That because YouTube, you gotta watch the thing, right? But in podcasts, yes. you just gotta tickle it a little bit, and that counts. Yeah, you get. That's the thing, and what you also Woo-hoo. get is the stuff around it. So what I could do, I know some right. So here's a great example, and we're we'll getting into the weeds on this. 
but I could use Captivate to dynamically insert some content before my segment that I know that most people like. That is, by the way, next week we're talking about this on stupid stuff. You might like it. So we can get really clever with this stuff, but that's that's a deeper dive. Um, but what's more interesting with this from a repurposing perspective is what can I do at Christmas? I can oh. engage. So oh. we do, you know, we do one podcast a week. We've got 52 flattering rams. Who are the top three? Well, those 52 need to battle it out. Those 52 need to just, do you, do you want to be the top number one thing in, in our industry, in our podcast? So you end up with this stuff. You can do roundups of stuff. You can do roundups of like stupid stuff in podcast. What was the stupidest thing that happened this year in podcasting? Vote on it. Here's a snippet to remind you of each of them. And guess what? That's all your Christmas episodes done. You don't have to turn out on Christmas Eve and record something. So you end yes. up so many things with this that you can do. Um, and, you know, we talked about the practice. <clears throat> you know, this is a real strong tip for like I'm a I'm a I've done what, 1500 podcast episodes, which is and, and then count. Yeah, I know I, I do a lot um, and then <laughs> countless public speaking gigs, you know, countless. Um, so I'm, I'm fairly loquacious and I, I've got enough. I've got enough knowledge under my belt about podcasting that I could do a 40 minute talk pretty quickly. Yeah. However, yes. I am still terrible at some stuff, right? So here's a great example. Um, I don't really edit my podcast too much. So I talked this week, I did a podcast episode of my podcast about uh, this this concept of testing your podcasting tolerances. And it's the same for video and live streaming or whatever. And, and the fact is that like, I like playing bass and I like playing golf. That's why I use those two examples. But dude, if I pick a bass up, I'm only going to slap that bass because I look cool and I'm going to do it for three minutes. I ain't learning scales. Like, ain't no chance. That's dull, All right? And I, and I am never going to be the world's best bass player. But for three minutes on a stage, someone's like, that guy can play bass. And then I give the bass back and I'm off the stage. That's all people need to know. And the point is that my tolerance, like, I love playing bass. All right? I am a bass player. But the parts of playing bass, I don't like all of them. I only like some of them with podcasting. Yeah. I like the planning, I like the recording, and I like the sort of interacting with users, but I don't like the editing. I don't like creating share images. I don't like any of that stuff. So what you do is you do the things that are going to make you continue producing the content because you will get to the point where you can reel something off like that on the fly. And what that will then do is it will mean that you can folk, you can produce better content and be good quicker which means that you're either going to generate some revenue or you are going to have spare time to focus on some of the stuff that you don't like as much and get better at that. So that's quicker. So you, it becomes this kind of, you know, you pick your battles. But back to the point about the practice, like I've done that many podcast episodes, but I don't edit. So if I cough, I'm like, yeah, that was a cough, everyone. Um, <laughs> last week, my, I, I, was, I was like, um, you know, podcast Tom Foolery 101. I was just sat here recording. Like it looks quite a dark room, but it's not. It's a pretty bright room. But I've just got it set up like this. And uh, I got my dog sat down there, little Norman. He sat down at the bottom, and I just forgot about him. And I'm talking about how to be a good podcaster, right? Um, and you know, I get to the end of this episode, and the dog is just—I don't know—he must have seen like the pizza guy, and he's just <laughs> right. So match that to the fact that I hate editing. What do I do? I'm like, oh, so my instant yeah. thought went, yeah, that's what I did. So I, I you know, I'm, a, I'm supposedly a well-practiced podcaster, but I screwed that up. And I just went, do you know what? That was Norman. He saw something outside. He's a pretty cute dog. Let me know if you want a picture of Norman. Email me, mark at rebelbasemedia.io, saying picture of Norman. I'm going to send you a picture by reply. Like, so what you do is you turn oh. it into engagement. You, you know, the, Whoa, there's that, logic you can do with this. Man. Whoa, Okay. That that's a gem. <laughs> I hope everybody that watched this on replay, if you get to that part, let me know you got to that part because that is a gem. Everybody that's seeing it now, gem, game saver. <laughs> I love it, and that's smart. <laughs> You're right. It doesn't anything that around. brings that anything that brings that interactivity, right? Like people ask me all the time, well, what do you do about the people that say dumb stuff in the comments? I leave them. Why? Because the yeah. algorithm only knows plus. It doesn't understand what they're saying. It knows that someone else commented, right? So yeah. if the person says something dumb and then your people come and fight that dummy, normally what happens, that person needs the soapbox longer so they'll get in a fight with your community. So you have 
three, you know, Knights Templar covering your back, and you got the the one ding dong over there causing trouble, <laughs> and they'll they'll have eighty comments just about each other. And then I'm like, okay, I'll take it. That's algorithm. Algorithm doesn't know. That's 80 comments. It doesn't know what it says. So that's that a genius it. way. <laughs> Even Mr. Cameron Junkie said that was fire. And then Mr. David Hunt also said that was fire. Dude, you know what you made me you. think of? Um, are you ready for Star Wars uh, Visions, the animation series? Oh, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruh. Dude, as a, I went to school in Japan, so anime is life. And... I'm like, I wonder how many spinoff podcasts are going to come out right. because of Star Wars Vision. I immediately thought of that as soon as I started seeing all the trailers and stuff because that thing is going to be incredible. I can't wait for that. Oh, dude, it looks so good. And, and that's actually a really good example because one of the next things that I was sort of going to mention about you know how you stand out and do that is to own something. So what I'm t like, no, no one wants to um, offend people or be divisive. Um, but like, who remembers that? Can you remember yeah, the yeah. guy at school that that, that that no one talked about or the girl at school that just turned up and did her work and just went? I can't. Like, I can't remember. I remember the crazy kid that was like jumping off the tables and like trying to suplex the teacher. Like, See, I remember that's that funny. guy. That's funny. You know why? Because you, you just said when Game of Thrones came out and everybody knew it was going to be successful. There's like two or three podcasts the first season. Nobody knew what was going to happen whatever. Once everybody got an idea that it was going to grow up, there became tons of Game of Thrones podcasts. Mm. All of them were like House Stark or House Lannister. The person mm. who came up and did a I Love Ramsey Bolton podcast. Perfect would example. Would have killed it. Like because Perfect. the Stark <clears throat> clan, you know, that's me deal with it the Stark clan would have went to go see what is this donkey talking about you know the Lannister people would have went to go see what is this donkey talking about and whoever said that is not alone there's some other people that mm -hmm. just likes to pick you know hey I'm Vader Nation sometimes I pick the villain uh but yeah it's it, that would have been a fantastic podcast just because yeah. it was so like opposite of the corduroy right it just rubs yeah. the fabric but you own that opinion yeah. You know, you sort, you, you sort of, you've got, you've got to believe it. And that's not to say you're bullish and you've not, you know, you're not going to change your opinions on, on, you know, if new facts are presented. But what you're saying is that this is the thing that I stand by and stand for. And because you, this is why generic interview podcasts are rubbish. Because you can't like this, we're, we're, we're digging into the depth of podcasting. Here. What, what, Wait, I thought people, you were saying the, that it's rubbish like this. <laughs> <laughs> Most interviews that no, the <laughs> most interviews I was just about to say, I promise, go the other way. They're like, Mark, what are the top two things that a podcaster can do to grow? And you're like, I do, you know, what do you want me to say? I, 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 you know, and be but good. what they don't do is, yeah, but they, what they don't do is what you did, which is be perceptive to that as something we should dig into. And what instead what they do is they go, good answer, Mark. Can you tell me what are your top three tips? For podcasting, you're like, sort of the same question, you know, you're like, and it happens all the time, but Wait, these, your acting of, of bad podcast host is pretty <laughs> spot on. So I'm gonna have to start questioning your capabilities, Dave, because that was perfect. <laughs> dude, I, um, that's the problem. I'm really just a bad podcaster. I, you know, I'm so grumpy, dude. Like, you know, if I get an email from someone pitching oh, to be on my show, bro, trust like, me, everybody in the comments can tell you that you're basically me. Cause it is, it, <laughs> this it is why not, we get on. It's not intended to be bad. It's like people, you keep saying with your face that you want this to happen, but I'm not seeing the do the things to make it happen. And if you do exactly. that, I got your back. Yo, I'm going to take you all the way. I'll tell you everything I know. Right. But if you just want to keep saying you want to get there and you're not doing it, I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I'm going to come at you. I'm going to come at you like, nope, you got to dig in. Nope, you got to dig in. Nope, you got to dig in. That's true. Like a broken record. Because this is so meaningful right now. Like, we are able to tell stories. We're able to move mountains. We're able to, like, m affect change. That's another thing that's just crazy. That, you know, people in their house with e camera, computer, a microphone, some headsets are, like, affecting change in communities and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, that's just unheard of a little bit of a time ago, right? I come from traditional media. So I know what a headache it was 
you know, sitting around radio with the PD trying to tell you exactly what to say and exactly what to do mm -hmm. versus us getting to just tell our generic stories, right? And I always find even the people who struggle to get their stuff started, once they get started, they develop this posse around them and they start touching other people, right? Mm. So with the, with the software that we have, with the skills that we're able to teach, now you're helping other people touch other people. I know that sounds creepy when you say it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it, uh, it's, it's just dope. Like we're, in this, we're just in a perfect spot right now. And so, yes, folks, mm -hmm. no, it's not too late to start a podcast. And my community has me on this thing that I'm starting on Sunday with my Creator 50 podcast is I don't want to hear my people that are Gen Xers, you know, 41 plus talking about, oh, that's young kids game. What the heck does that mm -hmm. you, you sit at a table and you talk like this is prime for old people sit around and gossip or lie. <laughs> yeah, you've got like 500 episodes in you. Like we, we, we've got like thousands of episodes. The kids have got like 50. They, you know what I mean? We, that was exactly what outlast. I said. Right. We have knowledge <laughs> that they don't have. We have experience they don't have. And you know, some of the best stuff that's out there, comparative analysis. Yeah, you go to any true. video, any magazine, whatever. Oh my goodness, it's always going to be Marvel versus DC, Star Trek versus Star Wars. You know, they're always going to do these sort of um, Mac and PC. You know, mm -hmm. useless comparisons. Well, we have enough experience to be able to put those comparisons to bear, and I think that's what makes it super, super dope. Bro, this is rad. So, uh, a question for you, like, as I was searching all the different platforms, the thing that this caught my eye, the thing that had me the most jazz, and I've told my community this when I was live streaming as to why, you know, everyone says, well, why'd you pick Captivate, say, over mm. Transistor or something else? And I was like, the built-in growth stuff, bro. Like, an RSS feed and sending your stuff to... I, my my tagline is uh, the place where all podcasts get and is got. Um, that's easy. Mm -hmm. Like everybody service does that. So what? But now what? Anybody can host. Now what? You have a growth mindset that is all about needle pushing to get everyone to grow their podcast. What was that? Mm -hmm. What? Where did that come from? I mean, like seriously, that's just amazing. There's probably two or three things that 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 we saw with that. Um, first of all, like you've just had 45 minutes of me just being grumpy about stuff. So imagine that infused into a platform like that. That straight talking, no BS. If you want to succeed, like you said, if you want to succeed, I will take you to that. But you have got to be serious about. It. That's why we don't have a free plan because huh. you know you, there's no point. You're not. You're never going to be serious. When you're serious, move from anchor to us. That's cool. We'll do that. So, the that was the first thing. Was you like hear that? My, anchor people, and they're not going to steal your your um, likeness and just use it for no reason. That's a fact. I, I hate anchor. And, <laughs> <laughs> you're not. Well, allowed, we, maybe you're not so, allowed to say that, but I can say that. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I didn't. You know, there's another me um, endorsed. Um, the. Um, the, but the, the fact is, like, a lot of my straight talking ability came out in the tools that we build. You know, it, it's like, okay, I think if I say that you as a growth podcaster should do this thing and I don't build you a tool to do it, then I'm an idiot. You know oh. what I mean? So that's that's my fault. So that's that's the first one. The second one is <clears throat> that... Um, like, you, 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 no one gets into podcasting to do all the crap and crap is subjective right <laughs> i bloody love a spreadsheet i love a spreadsheet all right so to me planning stuff out on a spreadsheet is brilliant so if i get a sponsor like how am i going to bill them what am i going to do let's stick it in a spreadsheet to someone else that's way more creative and smarter than me with that stuff they hate that stuff so i got to teach you because otherwise you're going to not succeed. And that's the point of, of that is that you're not going to succeed. So that's, that's sort of the education. And, and, and the other thing is that I know, like I've got such a network like you and Ian and um, like, I, I know, I just know so many people that 
if you ask me a question, one of my true mantras in life and life in business is that I will never dead end you. I will, I, if I don't know the answer, I will find out or I will find someone. And so I can bring that together into the education and the tools. Um, and then the third thing, <clears throat> really, um, you know, when it comes to like the podcast growth stuff, like you said, it, 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 like imagine a plumber turning up at your house, right? And he, you know, he knocks on the door. All right, mate, this is good. What's the price? And you know, what do you do? And he says, well, I'm a plumber. I can do the plumbing. Like, right. So can the other guy. Like that's sort of a prerequisite. You probably shouldn't have business cards saying you're a plumber unless you can do the plumbing. Like that's, you shouldn't really be applauded for that. Sort of a basic. So for us, it's like, why are you the best podcast host? We're not. We're not the budget because there is no best because podcast host, like just to, to have, to, to own a domain it's name. Subjective. We should be able, but we should be able to do the hosting bit just by turning the thing on. Like mm. no one should be able to say we're the best hosting. Instead, what we should be able to say is we're the best host for you, which is where Captivate's growth mindset comes in. You know, if you are someone that doesn't want to say, you know, go and find your podcast wherever you can find podcasts. If you want to actually measure that call to action, you use the Captivate single promo link. Go and listen at markasquith.com slash listen. So that's different. And what you end up with, it's like it's like that. You know, you set off one degree different on your on your trajectory. Um, mm. You know, Captivate set off one degree different right at the beginning, and then suddenly the hosts are there, and Captivate's over here somewhere doing this. You know, the basic stuff. No one should be applauded on. You've got to be a host to be a well, host. Well, that that leads to the fact that if you're not measuring it, how do you know you're getting anywhere? A lot of the guys aren't even giving you full stack analytics. Um, they give you. Uh, I don't know what the proper terminology is for it, so I just make up one of my doc ones. But I feel that my old guys, they're named after a legume, would give me stats that were designed to massage your ego, but they weren't real. If that exactly. Makes, and do you know what you know what I'm saying? The, the, yeah, I agree with that. And what I think what the a lot of a lot of stats are designed to keep you in the software. Um which we know about, you know, we, that's classic SAS 101. If you're an email marketing provider, get someone to have 50 email uh, um, addresses on their account. And, and, and you see it with other people that are like, congratulations, you've got 50 downloads. That's great, but that's, that's let's be really clear, that's for the onboarding more than it is for the user. The mm. real success is, the real, real, real success is letting someone choose their goal, their own goal, and having the range of diverse things that they need in order to hit that goal of theirs, not to hit your perceived goal, which are, you know, the, the vanity stats or whatever, um, that are intended to keep you in, in, in app. So it, it becomes about, you know, we talked right at the beginning, which brings it full circle about user centricity and, and, and keeping everything very success focused. At you, and again, we talked about the gym, right? So you can't possibly tell me that doing a pyramid set of 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 lat raises or a pyramid set of delt uh, presses or Arnold press whatever, you can't tell me that a pyramid set is wrong because until you know my goals, you don't know what the wrong is. The only <laughs> thing you can do is tell me the things that are not going to have any effect, which is the twenty-five by ten every single time, because that's static, and that is so. In, let's let's now switch that to podcasting terms. What you can't say to someone is um, that the marketing that you are doing is wrong. All you can do is say that the marketing that you're doing is measurably doing nothing. Mm. And that's different. That's, that's different. objective versus and that's subjective. that's provable, right? The providence would be there because yeah. you can actually look at it. Whereas they make a minor tweak, change an intro, move a segment around. People, listen, shorten those intros okay some oh, of y'all yeah. some of y'all intros look like marvel credits no <laughs> if you watch apple put, tv and you watch any show on apple tv because they're being you know globally shown they will show you the credits for all of the voiceover actors in all 26 mm -hmm. countries that apple tv works in so the credits at the end of apple tv if you actually don't press skip now that joint will be on for a long time. That's what you guys' intros sound like, and they're boring. Skip that mess. Put it somewhere in the middle. 
Oh, mm, they turn you off, and I'll oh, just that, have it as that, a bed. That like was, my, that was one of my rants. <laughs> oh, dude, I put a tweet out about it yesterday. I put like podcasting PSA. No one wants your ninety second intro. Um, you know that was a tweet I put out yesterday, and you know some people are like what I love my intro. I'm like, cool, that's yeah, gr- that's do. great. But, <laughs> yeah, but super stuff. And TV is a really good analogy because I think you've got to look at like um, think of eighties TV. Da, 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 you got all that stuff. Don't get me wrong brilliant theme tune but then flat fast forward to like 2005 2010 things started changing look at lost Doosh. and then this time in a pre a little pre-tease you just into the content and then you get the five second douche lost and you're yep. back to the story and but because the difference is these happened you know th- these phones happened and ipads happened and oh look a squirrel you know <laughs> distractions happened more um and you see you can't you gotta change and adapt you're right man i'm with you on the rant <laughs> no that's that's a that's a big one it's funny and and i, I even think of like uh law and order right uh, all you you just wait for that dung dung oh you know it's on when you hear that when you hear that double tap you know it's about to get good so yeah i think i think in the, in the grand scheme of things that with the way the movement is moving right now again no better time than the present to get started i think that we will pair nicely with your platform because we make it easy for people to record especially those of you who don't want to do a lot of editing and there's a lot of people that because now it's easier it used to be a pain in the butt to do a video and an audio podcast now it's so much simpler right i mean amazingly simple now so Mm -hmm. you can take our stuff take the video side if you want Pop it on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, Facebook, whatever. Have your video mm-hmm. rolling. You could take the ISO recordings out of ours and then basically throw it at Alphonic and then upload it to Captivate. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> like You could even do done. better than that as well. You could. Um, this is what I do because I'm lazy. You could put the file from the video into a Dropbox folder and then use Captivate's Zapier integration to send it to Orphonic and then back from Orphonic to a draft episode on Captivate. That's what I do because I'm lazy. I love it. Dude, it's genius. Me, you- me and Zap- Yo, Zapier became a friend because I was super mad at IFTTT one day and I go, I'm packing my stuff and I'm leaving. And then I found Zapier and I like it better. <laughs> so Same, that's, dude. that's cool that you actually have that integration because if you can automate these things, Again, this is why it's dope. Now, bro, back when we started, like we had to hand code our XML files, you know, (laughs) now we got services like Captivate that will take that, take our ISO recording or our video recording from Ecamm, drop it in the Dropbox folder, have it automatically process it off on it just to get you that perfect negative 16 LUFS loudness at full scale. We talk about this on other classes, gang, and then have it load into Captivate and then splash to all of the service. Dang, that's who workflow action. That's that's amazing because I love that. It, it's I my buddy Jared. We were talking recently. Like he's saying, like he doesn't rec- do a lot of editing with his stuff. He takes the recording straight out of Ecamm. And before mm-hmm. he was like you know pulling all these different stuff from his Rodecaster Pro. And then one day he just decided to listen to him, and he was like, "Holy crap, those ISOs are like golden." I was like, "I told you." And he goes, oh, I thought I had to do something. I was like, nah, bro, you're good. Just just slap him into Final Cut, line him up, and call it a go. And then, you know, us video guys, we edit podcasts in Final Cut. Don't do that. <laughs> use, <laughs> Log- use Logic or Audition or GarageBand or something made for audio. But a lot of us yeah. video, video nerds, we will edit podcasts in Final Cut, which is pure silliness. <laughs> so, man, this is, <laughs> this is dope. It, um, okay. You just dropped 2.0, like, I swear it was two weeks ago, because I got, mm. I, you, were, you were coming in my inbox, and I was like, I thought this dude was on holiday. He's popping up in the inbox talking about he dropped the 2.0. So what was it that you added, like, your, your favorite feature or something that people that are new to Captivation look into with the new update? Oh, we, we put 2.0 out. Yeah, we did. I was off that week. Like That's um, what I'm saying. How'd you do that? You got a twin? It was, it was total you got stupidity. a twin. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh man, I need one of those. I was just pure stupidity. I was like, yeah, I'll take that week off. And then we put the launch out that week. I was like, why did I do that? So we, we pre- you know, thankfully we pre-scheduled everything. Um, but yeah, so what, I mean, 2.0 was like the maturity of Captivate. You know, it was easy to start with, but then we, 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 
we introduced so much, man, like the Omni search for workflow. We introduced attributable short links, so first party tracking on external links. So if you mention a link in your podcast, um, you can attribute that link through. So it's a bit yeah. like pretty links or short links, but that's it's, it's in show cap- notes is a pain in the butt. So that's good. Oh, already. yeah. <laughs> we got something else coming out for that over the next few weeks. And then we did, um, I mean, there's so much in there, but we, we, we did. Um, a new one very recently, which is anyone can network podcasts together. So what that means is that if you've got a range of different podcasts that you run, you can network them together into one network and cross promo between them, um, which I know Ian Anderson Gray is all about at the minute. He's loving that. Um, and it, it's again, it's about that empowering. This is this is all a feature set that you can't get anywhere else. There's literally nowhere else that does that. Um, and it's about empowering the creator, you know, even at the starter level to set themselves up for success. You know, that's what it's about. It's not about wait until you think you're a success to unlock these mega enterprise tools that only the only the super people have. It's the other way around, you know. Let's just give it to everyone. Okay, um, that's fire. You know, we, we were talking about this in my class the other day, and I was gonna I was gonna ask you this next anyway, so it's kind of a perfect wrap up question. I'm, I'm just maybe I was missing something or maybe I'm crazy, but I was explaining because I was talking to my class and I was telling them what I was going to do. And I'm going to make this podcast launch it on Sunday and I was going to do everything live like I'm going to build yeah. it. And so you're going to see me from skeleton to up. So they watched me do the first episode. And then after I realized that I can't get approved unless I had an episode, but I didn't want to release the one that I recorded because well, I already said it was the first episode. Ooh, idea. Make a trailer. It's just an episode. You tag it trailer. Hello. Super simple. But it would get you approved everywhere. So it made it. Everybody's it. everybody's approvals came in so far except Apple, which is funny because I could just call somebody. <laughs> but um, <laughs> do it. So that that's all working fine. It, one of the questions that came up, they were like, well, what's the difference between this plan, this plan and this plan? And as I was looking, they're basically the same, except for yeah. you're going to hit an X amount of downloads or your multiplicity of shows like those are the only things so you're not like dumb in the first level down in some cheesy like oh here's a level whatever like you have the same thing all the way across the board yeah. and none of the other presenters are doing that right now that i think of and so again was that just out of you being angry at the at the industry it was like, I, I just don't see why you should be restricted by someone else's business plan. Like it is, that's, that's silly, you know? And so, you know, if you're a software company, um, like get smart and actually help people instead of just doing the basic and then locking the basic behind a wall. So that, that, that to me was a real big thing for Captivate. So, uh, you know, you can have, a, you can have unlimited podcasts on any Captivate plan. Host as many shows as you want. And I'm not talking episodes. I'm talking as many different Actual podcasts different as shows. you want. Ooh, yeah. And, and what crazy. I love about that is that, and, and the way that we tear it up is like, like every other podcast host buried deep in their terms and conditions is, okay, look, you're going to pay for different features because that's how we structured our plans. But buried deep in the T's and C's, and I promise you, you will find this in every set of TMCs in some guys. It's unlimited downloads subject to fair use. Now, the point with that is that bandwidth is the thing that we pay for as a podcasting company. So why pretend? Why not just put it up front and say, right, you can have everything. And the thing that we pay for is the thing that you pay pay for. And we will give you such a good deal on it that when you do need to upgrade, you will be more than likely making money from it because it's that well set up. So... And then, well, here's the other cool part of it as well, is that and it, we, we run that logic on everything, like network features, all right? Um, the only, one of the big restrictions is that you can't host client uh, podcasts mm. on any Captivate plan because we were like, well, people do have to be a little bit fair. Like we, we don't want people paying 19 bucks a month and then making 12 grand a month from it. We we're like, you've just got to be on the business plan. That's still a pile of downloads, 150,000 downloads a month. And you can. And it's not even that expensive. <laughs> you know, if you're pulling no, it's like 100 bucks. Geez, it's not even that expensive. So, no. man, it's great. Exactly. But everyone does this. So then what that allows us to do is we were like, right, network plans. This is for the networks, like the network features. And I was like, wait a second. No, it's not. 
like everyone else would do that. They'd put it on their business plan and say, this is for the networks. It's a hundred bucks. And I was like, but what if I want to create a network and how do I know that I can scale my network unless I have a network? Uh, you know, how do I know I can swim unless I'm in the water? You know, so I was, I remember saying to Kieran, I was like, we should just make this free to everyone, but then limit the amount of shows that people can network together. So I might have 50 podcasts in my account, but only three of them can be networked into a network on the basic plan. But guess what? That's plenty for the podcaster that has never started a network, but they can see mm. the benefits. They can see how it scales. They can see how the cross promo works and how it uplifts their entire traffic. And you saw, so you, you only scale up through success. You don't scale up through restriction, you know? And that's, I'm sure, again, someone somewhere would tell me that's a stupid strategy, but. Yeah. No, it makes sense. I mean, it makes it makes so much sense that it does. <laughs> like, it's kind of yeah. crazy. But, yeah, and maybe that's why no one's ever done it before. Because, again, it's one thing to start out with a, you know, abundance mindset. And it's another thing to start out with a scarcity mindset, right? So, mm. I think it would definitely attract more people. And yeah, that's why I, I wanted to have you come on and talk to because I got, I swear, the number one question I got from everybody is like, why did you pick them over anything else? Because I think a lot of people are trying to start. And bro, mm. you're in a saturated field. <laughs> let's, let's, not, let's, let's not get it twisted. You are in an extremely saturated field. Heck, even we are starting to become now, right? Because there's so many new services pop up. Some of them are going to be around. Some of them are not, right? They're just honestly just going to pop up and disappear. So mm -hmm. being in a field like that, you know, I appreciate what you're doing. So tell everybody how they can get started. I did put a link in the description if you guys want to go and check it. But I think, yeah, just Captivate FM. We got that. But I think you should listen to some of his classes. I I, would, I watched her Descript class. It was golden because uh, we just Thank did you. a we just did a master class with Descript. The two episodes before this one. So uh, okay, cool. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's a good one-two punch for the podcast people using Descript. Um, but yeah, tell people more how they can find more about you. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, Captivate.fm. We've got so many resources on there. Um, there's a big how to start a podcast page on there. And we've actually got um, we're moving this from another domain uh, which we own. Um, we've got what I think is like if you've paid for a how to launch a podcast course, you'll probably ask for a refund when I tell you this next link. So if you go to podcastsuccessacademy.com, that is a free how to start a podcast course. And it, it is like we have had people asking for refunds off gurus and I have had angry emails from gurus that I've deleted. And it just it, it's a fantastic course. It re, it's like all of this, no BS, here's what you do but like in four minute videos that will take you from nothing to actually being appro approved and beyond. And guess what module, one of the modules is record a trailer and pre-submit. <laughs> so you know that, dude. <laughs> See, I didn't even get that far yet. All right, man, this, is big. <laughs> this has been great. Of course, as soon as Star Wars Visions come out, I will bug you and be like, dude, did you see that first episode? <laughs> Dude, we gotta I, do that. We gotta get I, you on the Star Wars podcast. Actually, we'll I'm, get you on. I'm in. I'm in anytime. Anything Star Wars, anytime. And you know, it's funny when you were talking about on demand things. I think one of the greatest things that happened. Everybody hates, you know, Disney for Star Wars, right? I love it because I'm able to make my niece go through the whole canon. And so yeah. every other Friday when it's kicking with Uncle Day, we're we just in, we're covering the entire canon, and some of them were like deep for her, so we watched them a couple times. And she goes, "Now I get it why all of you weirdos watch this all the time." I go, "Yeah, because <laughs> it just never gets old, right?" So that's 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 it. what this you know on demand stuff brings to our table. Mark, thank you so much, gang. Another master class in the books. You got to watch master class light. Thank you to Jill for letting me steal her computer and this Elgato face cam, which I've never used before, but it's actually, it makes me look cute, so I'll take it. <laughs> and then <laughs> I know what I want to do. I want to build some stuff here in the eCam office and I'm going to bed because it's seven in the morning where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> it's well deserved, man. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, Mark. I really appreciate you. Gang, gang, uh, we will see you soon. And don't forget, we got a lot of stuff coming up. Leap in the live stream is just around the corner. So, you know, get your notepads and pens and pencils all sharpened up. We're going to teach you all of the things. And Ian Anderson Gray, 
who we were talking about earlier, is actually hosting one of the things there to talk to you about this very subject. So again, if you got a you podcast in you, get it out. He was the first ever, this is not a joke or a lie, he was the first ever Captivate user. Shut Amsterdam. up, really? Did you oh not? He messaged goodness. me, he was like, he was Marco, you, need, you know, he talked about holidays, he was like, Marco, we need to, uh, I'm thinking about starting a podcast, this is like a few years ago. I was like, he said, can you do anything with the hosting? I said, well, we've got this product that is just about in beta. It was like really alpha. And uh, Kieran went away, my co-founder, and I was like, he's a tech founder. And I messaged him, I was like, dude, I've got a, I've got a user on the platform using it. And he was just having kittens for like two weeks. <laughs> and that, that, that was Ian, dude, that was Ian. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, Ian and, and Mike Russell are two of my favorite like podcasters from that <laughs> side so of the face. What a- Oh man, his him and his this is music radio creative dot com. Yeah, gotta love Mike. Dude, he's 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 like insane professional. Like he, he was one of the first people that I met in podcasting. So I'm from about twenty minutes away from where they did all the meetups. And it, and you just you're like I I Mike, I'm Mark. He's like, Hello, do you wanna do a podcast right now? I'm like, um yeah, if you want, let's do it. So we did this like live podcast uh in a pub in Manchester, and then since then him and Isabella are just like just amazing so i love the guy dude that is awesome all of my manchester gear is right over there in the suitcase because it's ronaldo time i already ordered my my three new jerseys i'm straight i'm ready (laughs) oh dude that is yeah we got to talk about that one as well then because that's a fascinating move dude i am hardcore glory glory my people know (laughs) thank you guys so much (laughs) i will see you soon and get ready to leap and mark once again thank you for this aloha i appreciate you brother All right, gang, gang, until next time, aloha.